And from your experience, Suzanne, I mean, what is it that you find project managers struggle with most in terms of uh, needing support and coaching? You would probably be surprised, and I could ask you, what do you think those areas are that people struggle with? Or we could ask the audience to have a think, what do they think the typical areas are that project managers struggle with? In my experience, it is not the task aspects of a project that's the most challenging. We would think so. After all, we go on courses to learn how to plan a project and how to do proper risk and issues lists. In my experience, though, it's not what people struggle with the most. People struggle with two things, mainly. With the interaction, with really understanding how to motivate the team. Because in order to motivate your team, you need to really listen. You need to be there. You don't just need to see your team as resources who are there, you know, to carry out a task. You need to really relate to people and get the best out of them, find out what their strengths are so that they can contribute to your project. And also having that personal relationship with stakeholders. A lot of project managers, they hide behind their desk and they write emails and they're not so comfortable to go down and look the sponsor in the eyes and say, Mister, what do you really think of our project? What could we do better? How are we adding value? How could we add more value? I don't see a lot of project managers doing that. But the other thing that project managers really struggle with, or can struggle with, because everyone is different again, is the whole, you know, managing the stresses and the workload. Because especially these times when in, in corporate environments when we've had so many cuts, it's been, really been cut back to the bone in many areas. There was just not a lot of staff around, the project manager feels overwhelmed. And that's what I find the most often. It's, you know, just finding time to read a book. Just finding time to talk to a stakeholder. You know, they're bombarded with tasks and that's what they spend their time on. The problem is, they're being reactive. And the more reactive you are, the more reactive you will be tomorrow. It's really about taking a step back, looking at how you're doing things, and then figuring out, well, how can I work smarter? And in order for that to happen, the project manager often needs to delegate and to learn to focus on the 20% of tasks or things that add to the 80% of their results. So they really need to start using Pareto's principle and focusing on what is important. That's really where, as a coach, when I coach project managers, we always come down to that. How do you spend your time? What stresses you out? How can you remove some of these stressing factors? How can you get a team member to do this part? How can you get the PMO to do that part? What is it, where is it that you really add value and how can you start focusing on that? Because most project managers add value in planning, in risk and issue management, in building relationships, and in really understanding the vision and, and, and inspiring the team. They don't often add value in the nitty-gritty detail and in updating spreadsheets with um, how much money we've spent on tracking costs. It's all necessary, but it's not necessary that the project manager does it. Not in a big project. They must find support to help them with these things. Otherwise, they burn out. Because we, we are not superheroes, although we often are perceived as being it. We need help. So that's often really where we get to the crooks in a coaching session is, where should you be spending your time? And who can you delegate to? Because there's always someone to delegate to. If we take the time to grow people and initially to show them how to do it, we shouldn't just delegate and then close our eyes. No, we should handhold a little bit. And there are many team members that are not project managers, but they're perfectly capable of running with a, a small piece of the project. And I think with Agile, that often becomes quite visible the team becomes self-managing and frees the project manager up to focusing on, on the more important pieces.